Ah, Florida, a beautiful human oasis of who am I kidding? This place is downright terrifying. I mean, you got poisonous snakes, alligators, incredibly hostile conditions, and not to mention that it's a place where people move to die. So if that doesn't tell you enough about this place, well, you're definitely going to find out over the course of 14 stories. Now, these particular 14 stories actually have a lot to do with different humanoids and creatures being spotted all across the state. So buckle up, get ready. Here we go. In 2012, right before the height of the Mayan calendar end of the world thing going on, I was living down in Miami. I worked at a restaurant near the beach, typical South Florida stuff. One night, after closing up, I'm walking home. It's late, maybe 2 or 3 a.m., and I cut through an alleyway to shave some time off my walk. This alleyway was dimly lit and had a couple of trash cans overflowing, nothing unusual. But halfway through, my eyes catch something up on one of the building's fire escape. At first, I thought it was a big bird, one of these ugly vultures or something, but then it kind of turns its head, and it's definitely not a bird. You need to understand that this thing is hunched over, but even like that, it must have been about my height, maybe a bit taller. The skin was all gray and wrinkly, and the arms were too long, way too long for its body, ending in these gnarled hands. The head was oversized, shaped kind of like a light bulb, with two huge black eyes that glowed in the dim light. I froze in place. I wasn't scared exactly, more like my brain couldn't process what it was seeing. This thing seemed to be watching me too, just tilting its head back and forth slightly. After a few seconds, it turned away, then kind of scuttled further up the fire escape, moving fast like a big spider. Then it was out of sight. Now I stood there in that alleyway for a while, trying to figure out what the hell I just saw. A drunk guy with a weird mask? It didn't seem likely at that hour. Some kind of animal? I know of no one who moves like that. And those eyes, they just didn't look natural. And so the next morning, I went back to the alley during daylight. There was no sign of anything, which I expected. I never told anyone about it until now. It seemed too crazy, even for people down in Florida where weird stuff happens all the time. I still think about it sometimes. I wonder what the hell was in that alley. Part of me wishes I never cut through there that night, but... Another part can't shake the feeling that I saw something that most people don't get to see. Whatever it was, look, I'm not one for conspiracy theories and all that, but there are strange things out there. This felt different, in line with the weirder side of things, not just some animal misidentified in the dark. There's still that part of me that wants a logical explanation. Maybe it was a trick of the light a hallucination from exhaustion, or even some elaborate prank. But deep down, I can't shake the conviction that I saw something genuinely out of the ordinary, something that defies the categories my brain tries to stuff it in. That puts the supernatural idea, however unlikely, firmly on the table. For the sake of discussion, let's say what I saw was extraterrestrial. The way it looked and moved doesn't fit the little green men stereotype. It makes you wonder if the origin of these beings lies outside of our typical understanding of space and dimensions. Maybe they exist on a plane we barely interact with normally. My encounter isn't isolated. There are countless reports of strange lights, impossible creatures, and even objects appearing and disappearing. Some folks theorize these aren't just random events, but glimpses of beings from other dimensions briefly intersecting with our own. If these things are already here, just slipping in and out of our reality, why would they suddenly decide to stay? There are a few unsettling possibilities. Maybe our actions are influencing their world somehow. Maybe changes in our technology are letting them see us better. Or maybe they've always been here and something is about to change, making their presence more obvious. Now, 
If we're dealing with interdimensional beings, forget spaceships or laser beams. The nature of contact will be far stranger and more difficult to comprehend. Our whole concept of physics might be thrown out the window. This adds urgency to understanding what's happening. And so, do I believe this wholeheartedly? Not yet. But my encounter changed something about me. It made me open to ideas I would have dismissed outright before. The point isn't to jump to conclusions, but to realize that our world might be far more complex and far stranger than we currently understand. All right, here's what happened to me. I was 16, staying at my aunt's house in Florida for the summer. It was around nine o'clock at night and I was out on the back porch, just relaxing on the patio swing. The porch overlooks a small lake with a bit of wood surrounding it. The yard slopes down towards the water with the porch being raised up a few feet. So there I was, swinging and looking out at the lake, when all of a sudden, I got this really intense feeling that I was being watched. It wasn't just a passing sense, but a strong, almost physical sensation that something had its eyes locked on me. I started glancing around nervously, trying to see if there was anyone or anything there, but I couldn't spot anything out of the ordinary. I tried to shake it off and go back to relaxing, but I couldn't. The feeling just kept getting stronger and stronger, to the point where the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up. I was just about to go inside when I saw it. There was something standing in the shallow water at the edge of the lake, partially hidden behind a cypress tree. I could only see it from about the chest up, but I could tell it was massive, way taller than a normal person. Its skin was a dark, mottled green and looked slimy, like it was covered in algae, but the worst part was its eyes. They were glowing this bright, sickly yellow color, and they were fixed directly on me. I completely froze. I wanted to run, to scream, to do something, but I was paralyzed. It felt like those eyes were holding me in place. The thing started moving then, slowly wading out from behind the tree. I could see its full body now, and it was like nothing I'd ever seen. It had a humanoid shape, but its limbs were way too long and thin, and it moved in this jerky, unnatural way. As it got closer to the shore, I swear I could hear this low, guttural growling sound coming from it, even though its mouth didn't seem to be moving. That sound snapped me out of my paralysis. I jumped up from the swing and ran for the patio door, not daring to look back. I burst into the kitchen, startling my aunt half to death. I was babbling, trying to explain what I'd seen, but I could barely get the words out. My aunt tried to calm me down, telling me it must have been a trick of the light, or maybe an alligator. But I knew what I saw. That was no gator. I refused to go back outside for the rest of the night. I just sat in the living room, watching the patio doors, half expecting to see that thing press its face up against the glass. The next day, I went out to the lake to look for tracks or any kind of evidence, but there was nothing. Just the same old muddy bank, like nothing had ever been there. I spent the rest of the summer jumping at every noise, every shadow, I couldn't shake the feeling that the thing was still out there, watching me. I never saw it again, but I know what I saw that night. It was real, and it was watching me with an intelligence that no animal should have. I'm 20 now, and I still think about it all the time. I've done a lot of research trying to figure out what it could have been. Some kind of undiscovered creature, or a mutation maybe. I don't know. What I do know is that there are things out there that we can't explain, things that don't fit into our understanding of the world, and I'm not sure I want to know what they are or what they want. I love fishing, but this was a strange experience. I had my boat anchored in this little cove just off one of the main channels. It was probably around midnight, and the moon was full, so there was a decent amount of light. 
I was just sitting there, enjoying the quiet and the cool night air, when I heard this splash off to my right. At first, I figured it was just a fish or maybe a small gator, but then I heard it again, louder this time. I grabbed my flashlight and shone it out over the water, trying to see what was making the noise. That's when I saw it. There was something in the water, maybe 20 feet from my boat. It was hard to make out at first, but as it moved closer, I could see that it was big, a lot bigger than any fish or gator. It had this long, serpentine body, kind of like a giant eel, but it had to be at least 15 feet long. Its skin was dark and slick looking, and it had these weird fin-like protrusions running down its back. But the worst part was its head. It was almost human-like, but distorted and wrong. It had these big, bulging eyes that reflected the light from my flashlight, and its mouth was way too wide, filled with rows of sharp, needle-like teeth. It was like something out of a nightmare. I was frozen, just staring at this thing as it swam closer to my boat. It moved in this weird, undulating way, like a snake, but it was so much bigger. I could hear it making these strange clicking noises, almost like it was echolocating or something. As it got within a few feet of my boat, I finally snapped out of it. I grabbed the starter cord and yanked, trying to get the engine going, but it wouldn't catch. The thing was right up against the boat now, and I could feel it bumping against the hull. I looked over the side and saw its head break the surface. I don't remember exactly what happened next. I think I screamed, or maybe I just started swinging my flashlight at it. All I know is that I must have scared it off somehow, because the next thing I knew, it was gone, disappearing back into the dark water. I got the engine started and got out of there as fast as I could. I didn't stop until I reached the boat ramp, and even then, I kept looking over my shoulder, half expecting to see that thing following me. I told a few people about what happened, but most of them just laughed it off, said I must have been drunk or seeing things, but I know what I saw. That was no natural creature, no mutation or undiscovered species. That was something else entirely, something that doesn't belong in this world. I haven't been back to that spot since then, and I don't think I ever will. Just the thought of it makes my skin crawl, but I can't stop thinking about it, wondering what it was and where it came from. Part of me almost wishes I'd gotten a better look at it, just so I could prove to myself that it was real. But another part of me is glad I didn't. I don't think I could handle seeing those eyes again, or feeling that thing bump against my boat in the dark. All I know is that there's something out there in the Everglades, something that doesn't fit into our understanding of the world, and I'm not sure I want to know any more about it than I already do. Some things are just better left alone, left to the dark waters and the moonlit nights where they belong. I've been fishing in the Everglades for as long as I can remember. My dad used to take me out on his airboat when I was just a kid, and I fell in love with the place. There's just something about being out there on the water, surrounded by nothing but mangroves and sawgrass, that makes you feel alive. As I got older, I started going out on my own, exploring every nook and cranny of the glades. I've seen all sorts of things out there, alligators, panthers, but I always felt like there was something else, something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. Maybe it's because of all the stories I've heard over the years. You talk to some of the old-timers down here, and they'll tell you about things they've seen, things that don't quite make sense. Giant snakes, creatures that walk on two legs, lights in the sky that move in ways no plane or helicopter could. I always took those stories with a grain of salt. I mean, I've seen some weird things myself, but nothing that couldn't be explained. At least, not until that night on the water. Now, I can't help but wonder if all those old stories were true. If there really are things out there that we can't explain. 
things that have been living in the glades for longer than we can imagine. It's changed the way I look at the place, knowing that there's something out there that I can't understand. It's made me more cautious, more aware of my surroundings, but it hasn't stopped me from going out there. If anything, it's made me more determined to find answers. I've started talking to some of the old timers, trying to gather more stories, more information. I've even reached out to a few cryptozoologists, seeing if they might have any insights. So far, I haven't gotten very far, but I'm not giving up. Because the truth is, as much as that encounter scared me, it also fascinates me. It's like a puzzle that I can't quite solve, a mystery that I need to unravel. And I know that the only way I'm going to do that is by keeping at it, by not letting my fear get the best of me. Here's what happened to me a few years ago when I was living in Florida. I was out for a run one evening, just before sunset, on a trail that went through a nature preserve near my house. I had run this trail countless times before and never had any issues. It was a beautiful area with tall pine trees, sprawling live oaks, and the occasional glimpse of a gator in the nearby pond. I was about halfway through my run when I noticed something strange. There was a figure standing just off the trail, maybe 50 feet ahead of me. At first, I thought it was another runner or maybe a hiker, but as I got closer, I realized there was something off about it. The figure was tall, abnormally so, and seemed to be wearing some kind of long, dark cloak. I slowed my pace as I approached, trying to get a better look. The figure didn't move, just stood there facing away from me. I called out a hello, but there was no response. As I got within about 20 feet, the figure suddenly turned around and I felt my blood run cold. It wasn't human, at least not entirely. It had the basic shape of a person, but its features were all wrong. Its skin was a pale, sickly gray, and its eyes were much too large and completely black. It had no nose that I could see, and its mouth was just a thin, lipless slit. I stopped dead in my tracks. The creature stared at me for a moment, then took a step towards me. I stumbled backwards, nearly tripping over my own feet. Every instinct in my body was screaming at me to run, but I was frozen in place. The creature took another step, then another. It moved strangely, almost gliding over the ground rather than walking. As it got closer, I could hear a weird, wet, rattling sound coming from its chest, like it was struggling to breathe. Finally, my fight-or-flight response kicked in and I turned and ran. I've never run so fast in my life. I could hear the creature behind me, its heavy footsteps and labored breathing getting closer. I didn't dare look back. I burst out of the woods and onto the street near my house, still running at full speed. I glanced over my shoulder and saw the creature standing at the edge of the trees, watching me. It didn't follow me out of the woods, just stood there staring until I was out of sight. I ran all the way home and locked every door and window. I was shaking for hours afterwards, trying to process what I had seen. I tried to rationalize it, telling myself it must have been a homeless person or someone in a costume. But deep down, I knew that wasn't true. I never went back to that trail again. I still run, but I stick to well-populated areas now. And every time I see a shadow move out of the corner of my eye or hear a strange noise in the night, I can't help but think of that creature and wonder if it's still out there, waiting in the woods. I don't know what would have happened if it had caught me that day. I try not to think about it too much. I've thought about going back to the woods, trying to find some answers. But every time I consider it, I remember the fear I felt that day the absolute certainty that I was in the presence of something unnatural. And I know that I'm not ready to face that again, maybe not ever. So for now, I'm left with questions and a story that most people would never believe. 
But I know what I saw, and I know that there are things out there that we can't explain. And that knowledge has changed the way I look at the world forever. In 2013, my friends and I were camping in the Ocala National Forest in Florida. It was spring break, and we had decided to spend a few days out in the woods, just enjoying nature and getting away from the stress of school and work. We had set up camp in a pretty remote area, about a mile hike from where we had parked our cars. It was a beautiful spot, with towering pine trees and a small, clear stream nearby. We spent the days hiking, swimming in the cool water, and just relaxing around the campfire. On the second night, something strange happened. It was probably around 2 a.m., and we were all asleep in our tents. I woke up suddenly, not sure what had disturbed me. I lay there for a moment, listening, but all I could hear was the usual nighttime sounds of the forest. Just as I was about to drift back to sleep, I heard a loud splash coming from the direction of the stream. At first, I thought it might be a deer or some other animal, but then I heard it again, closer this time. It sounded like something large was moving through the water. I sat up, my heart starting to beat faster. I unzipped my tent and peeked out, trying to see what was making the noise. The moon was bright casting a silvery light over the campsite. Everything looked normal at first, but then I saw it. There was a figure standing in the shallow part of the stream, about 30 feet from our tents. It looked human, but there was something very wrong about it. It was extremely tall, at least seven feet, and its limbs were long and thin, almost spindly. Its skin was a pale, grayish color and seemed to be glistening wet. As I watched, the figure bent down and seemed to be scooping something out of the water. It brought its hands to its face, and I realized with horror that it was eating something. I could hear the wet, crunching sounds even from where I was. I must have made some kind of noise because the figure suddenly straightened up and turned towards me. Its eyes were large and black, reflecting the moonlight like a nocturnal animal. It stared right at me, and I felt a wave of pure terror wash over me. I scrambled back into my tent, zipping it up with shaking hands. I huddled in my sleeping bag, trying to control my breathing. I could hear the thing moving around outside, splashing through the stream and moving closer to our tents. I don't know how long I lay there, listening to the creature move around our campsite. It seemed like hours, but it was probably only a few minutes. Eventually, the noises faded, and I heard it splash back into the stream and move away. I didn't sleep the rest of that night. As soon as it was light enough, I woke my friends and told them what I had seen. They were skeptical at first, but when they saw how shaken I was, they agreed to pack up and leave. We hiked back to our cars in record time, jumping at every noise in the woods. We drove straight home, not stopping until we were far away from the Ocala National Forest. I never told anyone else about what I saw that night. I was afraid people would think I was crazy or making it up. But I know what I saw. It wasn't human, and it wasn't any animal I've ever seen or heard of. I've done a lot of research since then, trying to find any information on creatures that match what I saw. I've found a few stories that describe similar beings, but nothing concrete. Some people say they could be extraterrestrials, others think they're some kind of undiscovered species. All I know is that there's something out there in the Florida woods, something that doesn't belong. And I don't think I'll ever feel safe camping in the wilderness again knowing that it's still out there, waiting and watching. I still have nightmares about those black, reflective eyes and the sound of it eating in the darkness. I don't think I'll ever forget the terror I felt that night. And part of me will always wonder what would have happened if it had known I was there, if it had come for me instead of just moving on. 
I guess some things are better left unknown, but I can't shake the feeling that I brushed up against something truly alien that night, something that defies explanation. And that knowledge has changed me in ways I'm still trying to understand. My sister sent me your article because I had a similar experience at a lake near my hometown in Florida. I grew up in a small town not far from Lake Okeechobee and spent a lot of time fishing and boating there with my family. It was a warm evening in August 2019 when my brother and I decided to take the boat out for a short fishing trip before sunset. We were cruising along the shoreline looking for a good spot to cast our lines when we noticed something odd in the water ahead of us. At first, we thought it was just a big alligator or maybe a manatee, but as we got closer, we realized it was something else entirely. The creature was swimming just below the surface, and we could see its dark, elongated body undulating through the water. It was at least 20 feet long, with a thick, serpentine tail and a head that resembled a giant snake. As we watched in disbelief, it suddenly surfaced right next to our boat, its massive head rising out of the water like a periscope. We were both stunned and frightened by the sight of this creature. Its eyes were large and black, with vertical pupils like a cat's. Its mouth was filled with rows of sharp, jagged teeth, and its skin was a mottled green and brown, like the murky water it swam in. We could see its powerful muscles rippling beneath its scaly hide as it moved. The creature seemed to be studying us, turning its head from side to side as if trying to get a better look, not daring to move or even breathe too loudly. Then, without warning, it dove back beneath the surface and disappeared into the depths of the lake. We sat there for a few minutes. We had both grown up hearing stories about the monster of Lake Okeechobee, but we had always dismissed them as just local legends and tall tales. We had seen it with our own eyes, and we couldn't deny its existence. We quickly headed back to shore and told our family what had happened. They were skeptical at first, but when they saw the look of fear and amazement on our faces, they knew we were telling the truth. We reported the sighting to the local authorities, but they didn't take us seriously. They said it was probably just a large alligator or a manatee, and that we had let our imaginations run wild. But my brother and I know what we saw that day. It was no ordinary animal, but something truly extraordinary and terrifying. We've gone back to the lake many times since then, hoping to catch another glimpse of the creature, but we've never seen it again. I often wonder what that thing was and where it came from. Was it some kind of prehistoric relic that had somehow survived in the depths of the lake? Or was it something even more mysterious and otherworldly? I may never know for sure, but I'll always remember that incredible and frightening encounter on Lake Okeechobee. Not sure if this is of interest, but my brother and I have also had some other strange experiences on Lake Okeechobee one time. We were out on the water at night, just drifting and stargazing, when we saw a bright light hovering over the lake. It was too big and too bright to be a star or a planet, and it moved in a way that no aircraft could. It zigzagged across the sky, made sharp turns, and even hovered in place for a while before suddenly shooting off into the distance and disappearing. We tried to take a picture of it with our phones, but the light was so bright that it just showed up as a blur on the screen. Another time, we were camping on one of the small islands in the lake when we heard a strange humming noise coming from the water. It sounded like a giant swarm of bees or a massive engine, but there was nothing around that could have been making that noise. We searched the whole island but couldn't find the source of the sound. It lasted for about an hour and then just stopped abruptly. I don't know if these experiences are related to the creature we saw, but they definitely add to the sense of mystery and strangeness surrounding Lake Okeechobee. 
It's like there's something about that place that attracts the weird and the unexplained. I've talked to some of the older folks who live near the lake, and they have their own stories and legends about strange things that have happened there over the years. Some talk about ghostly figures that appear on the water at night. Others claim to have seen strange creatures lurking in the depths. There are even stories about ancient Native American curses and sacred sites that are said to be hidden around the lake. Or maybe we just had a run-in with a very rare and elusive animal that science hasn't yet documented. I don't know. All I know is that the memory of that encounter will stay with me for the rest of my life, and I'll always be left wondering about the true nature of the creature we saw that day on Lake Okeechobee. I spend most weekends out fishing. You gotta love Florida for that. I usually take the boat out around the 10,000 Islands area. It's quieter out there, and the fishing's usually good. One Saturday, I was aiming for this spot about a mile off the coast, somewhere south of Everglades City. Great for snook, if you hit it at the right time. Anyway, I get there, and this weird fog's rolled in. It wasn't thick, but it kind of blurred things around me. The water felt different too, like choppier than it should have been for how calm the air was. Figured a storm might be building up, so I got ready to reel in, maybe head back. Then I saw it. Out in the fog, a good distance away, was this huge shape. It looked tall, way bigger than any bird I've seen around here, and it moved weird, dipping just under the water then popping back up a bit further. Wasn't swimming, more like bobbing. Hard to explain. My brain immediately tried to make sense of it. Dolphin? Too big. Shark? Wrong shape. For a second, the old gator stories kicked in. But even they don't get that far out, do they? The rational part of me said, turn around and get out of there. But I don't know. I guess that curious part took over. I cut the engine and sat real still, just watching. That thing, whatever it was, got closer. Now I could see it better, and it still didn't make sense. It looked like a person, but stretched way too tall, way out of proportion. The head seemed small and kind of pointed. It didn't move like a person either, more like a puppet jerking around. Maybe there was something wrong with it. Did it need help? Then. It just stopped, maybe 100 yards from my boat. I couldn't even see its legs through the fog, just that stretched out body rising from the water. We just stared at each other. Part of me felt freaked out, like something wasn't right with this thing. But mostly, I felt frozen, stuck on my boat, waiting for it to do something else. I didn't even grab my phone or anything. After a bit, I don't know exactly how long, it kind of sunk out of view, just went under and didn't resurface. The fog thinned out after that. I started the engine and got the hell out of there quick. Now, here's the thing, and why I'm writing this. I saw something that day. I know I did. I'm not the kind to make stuff up, but I don't know what I saw, and that keeps bothering me. I haven't been back to the same spot since. Part of me wants to, to try and see it again and figure it out but something else is holding me back. Maybe it's, I don't know, fear? Yeah, maybe fear's the right word for it. I'd call the overall shape humanoid, but that's where the similarities end. It must have been at least eight feet tall, maybe taller. The limbs were too long, like a stick figure drawing all out of whack. Its body was thin, too thin for something that size to stand upright. Even in the fog, the skin looked dark, maybe a deep gray, with a kind of wrinkled texture. The head was the worst part, small compared to the body, almost like a pinhead. It sat low on the shoulders, no real neck to speak of. The face, as best as I could see, had big eyes, no whites or anything I could make out, just big and solid black. I couldn't see a nose or a mouth, and that's what made it seem so unnatural. The way it moved was just plain wrong. 
It would jerk back a few steps in the water, then go completely still, then sort of lunge forward, almost like a stop-motion animation. I got the feeling it was clumsy, but powerful. Definitely the strangest thing was the stillness. It never made a sound, never seemed to be struggling. That's the best way I can describe it. Honestly, even thinking about it now gives me that unsettled feeling again. The worst part is not knowing. Was it some kind of animal I've never heard of? Something else? I've racked my brain, but come up with nothing. Okay, here's the thing. I'm not entirely convinced it's supernatural. That's the thing that keeps me going back and forth. But here's why I have my doubts about it being a normal animal. The biology doesn't add up. Proportions, movement, even the way it seemed to breathe, or not breathe, make zero sense. No animal I know of looks or acts like that. Sure, there's always the new species angle, like those deep sea creatures they occasionally find. But in a shallow, popular fishing area, that seems like a huge stretch. The circumstances were unusual. The sudden fog, the choppy water, and that thing just appearing, it felt connected. Like the environment changed around it, instead of it just being a part of the environment. You spend enough time outdoors, you get a feeling about these things. The intuitive feeling. This is harder to explain, but deep down, a part of me knows this was different. Not just a weird animal, but something that shouldn't exist according to the world as I understand it. There's a word that keeps coming to mind, but it sounds crazy, unnatural. The unexplainable. I'm a logical guy. I like things to make sense. But there are things I've seen out there that defy easy explanation. Fishermen, outdoorsy folks, we see stuff that science can't always account for. This, this felt like one of those moments. Look, I could be wrong. Maybe there's some ridiculously deformed animal out there. Or I had a weird hallucination or something. But I know what I saw, how real it felt. And until I get a better answer, the supernatural option is staying on the table. This crazy thing happened to me a couple years back, and I'm still trying to make sense of it. I live in Florida, out in the boonies where nothing much ever goes down. It was just another typical night, or so I thought. I woke up suddenly in the middle of the night, not sure why. I had this weird feeling like something wasn't right. I decided to go downstairs and check on my German shepherd, Buddy. He usually sleeps in the living room. The house was pitch black, but I could see all right thanks to the nightlights we have plugged in everywhere. I'm not a fan of the dark. Anyway, I get downstairs and I see Buddy wide awake, staring at something in the corner of the room. He's not barking or growling, just dead focused. I look over to where he's staring and my heart nearly stops. There's this massive creature standing there, hunched over because it's too tall for the room. It had to be at least eight feet, maybe more, and I had to crane my neck just to see its face. This thing, it looked sort of like an alligator, but it was standing upright on two legs. Its skin was scaly and dark green, glistening like it was wet. It had a long snout filled with razor-sharp teeth and these piercing yellow eyes that seemed to glow in the dim light. But the weirdest part was its arms. They were way too long for its body, almost dragging on the ground, and it had these huge clawed hands that looked like they could tear through anything. The creature was just standing there, staring right at me. It was so still, like a statue. I was frozen in fear, couldn't even breathe. I thought for sure I was about to become this thing's midnight snack. Suddenly, it started moving towards me real slow and deliberate. I finally unfroze and started backing away, trying to keep some distance between us. I bumped into the coffee table and nearly fell over, but I couldn't take my eyes off this monster. 
It kept coming, getting closer and closer. I could hear its raspy breathing, smell the dank, swampy odor coming off its skin. I was absolutely terrified, just as I thought it was about to lunge at me. There was a loud crash from the kitchen. The creature whipped its head around at the noise, and in that split second, I bolted. I ran faster than I ever have in my life, straight out the front door and into the night. I just kept running until I couldn't anymore. Then I collapsed on the side of the road, gasping for air. I must have looked like a crazy person, out there in my pajamas in the middle of the night. After a while, I walked to the nearest gas station and called the cops from the payphone. I told them there was an intruder in my house, but I didn't mention what it really was. I mean, who would believe me? When I finally got back home with the police, the creature was gone, but the living room was trashed, furniture knocked over, and claw marks on the walls. The cops thought it must have been a bear or something. I knew better, but I didn't argue. I never saw that thing again, but I swear I can still feel its eyes on me sometimes, watching from the darkness. Buddy doesn't like to be in the living room anymore, and I don't blame him. I've never been so scared in my life. I don't know what it was, where it came from, or why it was in my house that night, but I know what I saw, and I pray to God I never see it again. After that night, my whole understanding of the world was flipped upside down. I mean, I've always been a pretty rational guy, you know? I believe in what I can see, what can be explained. But this, this defied explanation. I keep going over it in my head, trying to make it make sense. Was it some kind of mutated animal? Something that science just hasn't discovered yet? Was it an alien? Like something out of those UFO conspiracy shows? Or was it something supernatural? A demon or a monster from another dimension? The thing is, no matter what theory I come up with, none of them sit right with me. Because if any of them are true, then that means the world is a lot stranger and scarier than I ever wanted to believe. It means there are things out there that we can't understand, that we can't control. It's messed with my head, if I'm being honest. I find myself questioning everything now. Every shadow, every odd noise, I'm wondering if it's another one of those creatures. I'm jumping at every creak in the house, every rustling in the bushes outside. And what if it comes back? What if it's not alone? These thoughts keep me up at night, staring at the ceiling, listening for any sign that it's returned. But the worst part, the thing that really eats at me, is not knowing why. Why did it come to my house that night? Was it just a random encounter? Or was there some reason it chose me? Does it want something from me? I can't help but feel like there's some deeper meaning to all this, some message or warning that I'm supposed to understand. But for the life of me, I can't figure out what it is. All I know is that ever since that night, the world has felt different. Less solid, less certain. It's like I've seen behind the curtain, caught a glimpse of something I was never meant to see. And now I can't unsee it. I don't know if I'll ever have answers, if I'll ever understand what that creature was or what it wanted. But I do know that it's changed me in ways I'm still trying to comprehend. It's made me question everything I thought I knew about reality. And honestly, that scares me almost as much as the creature itself. So, after I finally managed to catch my breath at the gas station, I knew I had to call the cops. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? There was a monster in my house, for Christ's sake. I dug around in my pockets for change and thankfully found just enough to make the call from the payphone. My hands were shaking so bad I could barely dial the number. When the dispatcher answered, I started babbling about the creature, about how it was in my house and how I'd barely escaped. I was probably yelling, now that I think about it, sounding like a complete lunatic. The dispatcher cut me off mid-sentence, asking if I'd been drinking or using drugs. I couldn't believe it. I was calling for help, and they thought I was some junkie having a bad trip. 
I tried to explain again, tried to make them understand that this was real, that I was in danger. But the more I talked about the creature, the less they seemed to believe me. Finally, the dispatcher just sighed and told me to go home and sleep it off. They said if I called again with this nonsense, they'd have to send an officer to bring me in for wasting police time. I was stunned. Here I was, scared out of my mind, begging for help, and they were threatening to arrest me. I didn't know what to do. In the end, I just hung up the phone and started the long walk back to my house. I figured I was on my own, that no one was going to believe me about what I'd seen. It was a bitter pill to swallow, realizing that even the people who were supposed to protect and serve thought I was just some crazy guy spouting nonsense. It made me feel even more isolated, more vulnerable. Looking back, I can't really blame them. I mean, if someone called me up ranting about a giant lizard man in their living room, I'd probably think they were nuts too. But in that moment, when I was terrified and desperate for help, it felt like the ultimate betrayal. It's just another layer to the whole surreal experience. You know, not only did I have to face this inexplicable, terrifying creature, but I had to do it alone, without anyone to back me up or believe in what I was going through. It's a lonely feeling, let me tell you. And it's one that stuck with me, even long after that night. It's hard to trust people, to feel like anyone's really got your back when you've been through something like that and been brushed off as crazy. But I guess that's just part of the burden of having seen what I've seen. It's not just the fear and the confusion, it's the isolation too. It's knowing that no matter what happens, no matter what else comes out of the darkness, I'm probably going to have to face it on my own. We live in a pretty rural area, lots of woods and swamps around. It was a clear night, full moon shining bright. Rusty started getting real antsy, pulling on his leash and whining. I figured he'd caught a scent of something, maybe a raccoon or a possum. But then I heard this noise, like a cross between a howl and a scream. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Rusty started barking like crazy, trying to pull me towards the trees. That's when I saw it. At first, I thought it was a bear, but it was walking on two legs. It was tall probably seven or eight feet, with shaggy dark fur. But the face, that's what really got me. It was almost human-like, but with a long snout and these glowing red eyes. The thing let out another one of those howls and started coming towards us. I couldn't move. I was so scared. Rusty was going nuts, barking and snarling. The creature got closer, and I could see its teeth, long and sharp, like knives. I don't know what would have happened if Rusty hadn't lunged at it. He broke free from his leash and charged the monster, snapping at its legs. That seemed to startle it, and it swatted at Rusty, sending him flying. I heard him yelp, and that broke me out of my trance. I ran over to Rusty, scooped him up, and took off running. I could hear the creature behind us crashing through the underbrush. I've never run so fast in my life, my lungs were burning, my heart felt like it was going to explode out of my chest. Somehow, we made it back to the house. I slammed the door shut, locked it, and collapsed on the floor. Rusty was whimpering, and I saw he had a gash on his side from where the creature had hit him. I called animal control, told them there was a dangerous animal in the area. They said they'd send someone out to look, but I could tell they didn't really believe me. I mean, how could I explain what I'd seen without sounding crazy? The next day, I took Rusty to the vet. They stitched him up, said he'd be okay, but they couldn't explain what could have caused a wound like that. They thought maybe it was a bear or a panther, but I knew better. I haven't gone back out in those woods since then. I keep thinking I hear that howl in the distance, like it's waiting for me. Rusty's been acting strange too, always staring out the windows and growling at nothing. I don't know what that thing was or where it came from, 
but I know it's still out there, somewhere. And I can't shake the feeling that it's not done with us yet. I just hope to God we never cross paths with it again. A few nights after the encounter, I woke up to the sound of scratching at my front door. It was loud, insistent, like something was trying to claw its way in. Rusty was going crazy, barking and howling. I grabbed my shotgun and crept to the door, heart in my throat. But when I flung it open, there was nothing there. Just deep gouges in the wood, like something with big claws had been at it. Then, about a week later, I started finding dead animals around my property. Rabbits, mostly, but also a couple of deer. They looked like they'd been mauled by something big, guts torn out and scattered everywhere. But here's the thing, they were always arranged in this weird pattern, like a circle with a line through it. It gave me the creeps. And it's not just me. My neighbor Jim, he's been complaining about strange lights in the sky over his place. Says they hover there for a few minutes, then zip off faster than any plane he's ever seen. He's even got a couple of blurry pictures, but you can't make out much. The worst thing, though, happened just a couple nights ago. I was out on my porch, having a beer and trying to calm my nerves. Rusty was lying at my feet, but he kept lifting his head and growling at the shadows. Suddenly, he just took off, bolting into the woods before I could stop him. I called for him, but he didn't come back. I was just about to go after him when I heard this god-awful scream. It sounded almost human, but not quite, and it was coming from the same direction Rusty had run. I grabbed my flashlight and my gun and headed into the trees, yelling for my dog. But the deeper I went, the quieter it got. It was like the whole forest was holding its breath. And then I saw it. In a little clearing up ahead, there was this thing. It looked almost like a person, but it was all wrong. Too tall, too thin, with long, spindly arms and legs. Its skin was pale, almost translucent, and it had no face, just smooth skin where features should have been. It was hunched over something on the ground, and with a sick jolt, I realized it was rusty. He wasn't moving. I don't remember pulling the trigger, but suddenly, the thing jerked backwards, black blood spraying from a hole in its chest. It made this terrible gurgling noise and then disappeared into the trees, moving faster than anything I've ever seen. I grabbed Rusty and hightailed it out of there, all the way back to the house. He was still breathing, thank God, but he was cut up something awful. I loaded him into the truck and rushed him to the emergency vet. They managed to save him, but it was touch and go for a while, and the wounds they said they'd never seen anything like it, said it looked like he'd been attacked by some kind of wild animal, but different, like nothing they'd seen before. Since then, I've been jumping at every shadow, every strange noise. I keep my gun close and my doors locked. I don't know what's happening around here, what kind of creatures are lurking in the dark, but I do know that ever since that first encounter, the rules have changed. The world isn't what I thought it was. There are things out there, things that defy explanation or logic. And the scariest part? I don't think they're going away anytime soon. If anything, it feels like they're just getting started. Like whatever door that first monster opened, it's letting more and more of them through. I don't know how to stop it or if it can even be stopped. All I know is that I've seen things I can't unsee, things that will haunt me for the rest of my days. I'm writing this because I don't know where else to turn. I've tried telling people, tried reporting it to the authorities, but nobody believes me. They think I'm crazy or drunk or just making it all up. But I know what I've seen, what I've experienced, and I can't just ignore it, can't pretend it's not happening. It's real and it's terrifying, and I feel like I'm in way over my head. So I'm reaching out to you, 
to anyone who might be reading this. I need help, need advice, need to know that I'm not alone in this. I've spent my whole life in the Florida swamps, and I've seen some things that would make most folks think I'm crazy. If you're not from around here, you probably wouldn't believe half the stories I could tell you. I've had run-ins with the skunk ape, seen strange lights hovering over the Everglades at night, and even had a close call with what I can only describe as a real-life chupacabra. But the encounter that still haunts me the most is the one I had with something that I can't quite explain. This all happened back in the summer of 2005. I was working as a fishing guide, taking tourists out on the waterways to catch bass and catfish. I had a group of college kids booked for a night fishing trip, so I decided to scout out a new spot a few days beforehand. I took my John boat out to a remote part of the swamp that I hadn't explored much before. As I was navigating through the cypress trees and Spanish moss, I started to get a feeling like I was being watched. I chalked it up to the usual critters, gators, birds, maybe even a Florida panther. But then I heard something that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It was a sound I'd never heard before in all my years in the swamp, a kind of high-pitched chirping whistle that seemed to be coming from all around me. I cut the motor on the boat and listened closer. The sound was getting louder and more frantic, like a chorus of cicadas on steroids. I scanned the banks, trying to spot the source of the noise, but I couldn't see a thing. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of movement in the water. At first, I thought it was just a fish jumping, but as I focused on the spot, I realized it was something much bigger. A dark, slick shape was gliding just beneath the surface, and it was moving fast, like a torpedo. It circled the boat a few times, then suddenly dove down into the murky depths, I figured I had just seen a big gator, or maybe even a manatee, so I didn't think much of it. But a few minutes later, the thing resurfaced right next to the boat, and I got a good look at it. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. The creature was about six feet long, with a serpentine body covered in oily black scales. Its head was almost crocodilian, but with bulging, lidless eyes that glowed an iridescent green. When it opened its mouth, I saw rows of needle-like teeth and a long, forked tongue that flicked out to taste the air. I was frozen in shock, my mind trying to process what I was seeing. The thing let out another one of those unearthly chirping whistles, then lunged at the boat with lightning speed. Its jaws clamped down on the gunwale, and I could feel the whole vessel lurch and shake as it tried to drag me under. I don't know what made me do it, but I grabbed the oar and started beating at the creature's head with all my strength. It finally let go and disappeared back into the swamp with an angry splash. I cranked the motor and got out of there as fast as I could. I never saw the creature again after that day, but I can still hear its eerie whistling in my dreams sometimes. I've tried researching it, looking for any reports of similar sightings in the area, but I haven't found a thing. Maybe it was some kind of prehistoric relic that had survived in the untouched parts of the swamp, or maybe it was something that had no business existing in this world at all. All I know is that the Florida Everglades hold secrets that most people couldn't even imagine and I'm not sure I want to spend too much time pondering what else might be lurking out there in the darkness of the swamp. I want to share an experience I had a few years ago that I just can't explain, and I feel like I need to get it off my chest. I'm hoping that by sharing my story, maybe someone out there can help me make sense of what happened, or at least let me know that I'm not alone in this. Now, I'm not usually one for ghost stories or tales of the supernatural. I'm a pretty down-to-earth guy, always have been. But what I saw that night, it's changed the way I look at the world, 
it's made me question everything I thought I knew. It was a hot summer night, and I was out on my back porch, having a beer and trying to cool off. I had just gotten off a double shift at the factory, and I was beat. My dog, Bandit, was lying at my feet, panting in the heat. Suddenly, Bandit's ears perked up, and he started growling, low and deep in his throat. I'd never heard him make a sound like that before. He was staring out into the swamp, his hackles raised. I stood up to see what he was looking at, and that's when I saw it. Two bright, glowing eyes, staring right back at me from the trees. They were a sickly yellow color, and they seemed to be floating a good seven or eight feet off the ground. Before I could even react, this thing stepped out of the shadows. It was tall, taller than any man I've ever seen, and it was covered in dark, matted fur. It had a face like a wolf, but it was walking upright like a person. I was frozen, couldn't even breathe. Bandit was going nuts, barking and snarling, but the creature didn't even seem to notice. It just kept coming towards me, slow and steady. As it got closer, I could see its teeth, long and sharp, glinting in the moonlight. Its eyes were fixed on me, unblinking. I swear, it felt like it was looking right into my soul. Just as I thought it was about to pounce, Bandit lunged at it, snapping at its legs. The creature let out this unearthly howl and swiped at Bandit, sending him flying across the yard. I heard him yelp as he hit the ground, but I couldn't take my eyes off the monster. It turned back to me, and I swear it grinned like it was enjoying my fear. It took another step forward, and suddenly I could move again. I stumbled backwards, tripped over my own feet, and fell on my ass. The creature loomed over me, close enough that I could smell its rancid breath. It reached out one clawed hand, and I thought for sure I was dead. But then, just as quickly as it had appeared, it turned and bounded off into the swamp, disappearing into the night. I sat there for a long time, shaking and trying to catch my breath. Bandit limped over to me, whining and licking my face. I checked him over, but he seemed okay, just a little banged up. I didn't sleep a wink that night, or for many nights after. I kept seeing those glowing eyes every time I closed my own. I started researching, trying to figure out what the hell I had seen. Werewolves, skinwalkers, all kinds of cryptids, but nothing quite fit. I even went to the police, tried to report it, but they just looked at me like I was crazy, said I must have seen a bear or maybe I was just drunk. I knew what I saw though, and I knew it wasn't natural. Since then, I've been seeing strange things around my property. Weird footprints, claw marks on the trees, animals drained of blood. It's like that thing is still out there, watching me, waiting. I don't know what it wants or if it'll come back. All I know is that the world is a whole lot stranger and scarier than I ever imagined, and I can't shake the feeling that I've seen something I was never meant to see, something that's not of this world. I'm writing this down now because I need to tell someone, need to get it off my chest. If anything happens to me, if I disappear one day, I want there to be a record. I want people to know the truth. It was a hot and humid summer night in Florida, and I had decided to go for a walk in the woods near my house. I had always enjoyed the peace and quiet of nature, but this night felt different. The air was thick and heavy, and the crickets seemed to be chirping louder than usual. As I walked deeper into the woods, I noticed a strange smell in the air. It was a musty, earthy scent that I couldn't quite place. I figured it was just the dampness of the forest floor and kept walking. Suddenly, I heard a rustling in the bushes ahead of me. I stopped in my tracks, thinking it might be a deer or some other animal. But as I peered into the darkness, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There, standing in a small clearing, 
was a creature unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was about seven feet tall and had a humanoid shape, but its skin was a sickly green color and covered in scales. Its eyes were large and black, and its mouth was filled with sharp, jagged teeth. I froze, not knowing what to do. The creature seemed to be staring right at me, and I could feel its gaze boring into my soul. I wanted to run, but my legs wouldn't move. It was like I was paralyzed with fear. The creature took a step towards me, and that's when I noticed the long, razor-sharp claws on its hands. I finally managed to snap out of my trance and turn to run, but the creature was fast. It lunged at me, its claws slashing through the air. I dodged to the side, barely avoiding its grasp. I ran as fast as I could through the woods, branches and leaves slapping against my face. I could hear the creature crashing through the underbrush behind me, getting closer with every step. My lungs were burning and my legs were aching, but I didn't dare slow down. I knew that if the creature caught me, it would be the end. Just as I thought I couldn't run any farther, I burst out of the woods and onto the street near my house. I glanced back over my shoulder, but the creature was nowhere to be seen. I stumbled up my driveway and into my house, locking the door behind me. I collapsed onto the floor, gasping for air and trembling all over. To this day, I don't know what that creature was or where it came from. I've never seen anything like it before or since, but I know that what I saw that night was real. This particular incident took place back in the summer of 98. I was staying with my grandparents at their old hunting cabin deep in the Everglades. It was a rustic little place, miles from the nearest town or neighbor. I was there to help my grandpa with some repairs on the cabin and to do some fishing in the nearby canals. Things were going pretty smooth for the first week or so, but then the strangeness started. Late at night, we began hearing peculiar noises outside the cabin. At first, we reckoned it was just the usual sounds of the swamp. Gators bellowing, birds calling, that sort of thing. But as the nights wore on, the sounds got closer and more distinct. It was an odd scratching and scuffling, like something was crawling around under the porch and around the walls. Well, one night... I reckon it was about the fourth or fifth night of this, the noises took a turn for the worse. The scratching turned to a kind of frenzied clawing, and the whole cabin shook like something big was trying to break in. I grabbed my grandpa's old shotgun and a flashlight, and headed out to see what the commotion was, thinking maybe it was a bear or a panther. As I stepped out onto the porch, I caught a glimpse of something mighty peculiar scurrying off into the darkness. It was about the size of a big dog, but it sure didn't move like any dog I'd ever seen. It scampered off on two legs, all hunched over and jerky. I tried to follow it with my flashlight beam, but it was fast as lightning and vanished into the underbrush. Now, here's where things get real bizarre. I started searching around the perimeter of the cabin to see if I could find any tracks or sign of what this thing was. As I got around to the back side, I damn near tripped over something in the dark. I shone my light down, and there on the ground was a big old catfish, still alive and flopping around. But this fish looked wrong somehow. Its skin was all pale and sickly looking, and its eyes were milky and bugging out of its head. The strangest part though, was that the fish had what looked like a tiny, half-formed human hand protruding from its belly. I near about dropped my flashlight when I saw that. I hightailed it back into the cabin and we didn't hear the noises anymore that night. But I couldn't shake the image of that monstrosity of a catfish out of my head. The next morning, I went back out to where I had found it, but there was no sign of the thing just a stain on the dirt where it had been bleeding. I never did figure out what unholy creature was lurking around my grandparents' property that summer, 
or what it wanted with that abomination of a fish. My grandpa reckoned maybe it was one of those government experiments gone wrong, but I ain't so sure. I live in a small town in Florida, and I've always been fascinated by the woods and swamps that surround our area. I've spent countless hours exploring the wilderness, fishing in the lakes, and camping under the stars. But one experience I had a few years ago has left me questioning everything I thought I knew about the natural world. It was a hot summer night, and I decided to go for a walk in the woods behind my house. I had done this many times before, but something felt different that night. The air was heavy and still, and the usual sounds of crickets and frogs were strangely absent. I brushed off the odd feeling and kept walking, my flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. I had been walking for about 20 minutes when I heard a strange noise coming from the trees to my left. It sounded like a deep, guttural growl unlike anything I had ever heard before. I stopped in my tracks and shone my light in the direction of the sound, but I couldn't see anything. I figured it must have been a bear or maybe a wild boar, so I decided to turn back and head home. As I was walking back, I heard the sound again, but this time it was closer and louder. I spun around and saw a pair of glowing red eyes staring at me from the shadows. They were too high off the ground to be a bear or any other animal I knew of. I froze. The thing stepped out of the shadows and into the beam of my flashlight. It was at least eight feet tall, with long, spindly arms and legs. Its skin was a sickly gray color, and it had a head that looked almost human, but with sharp, jagged teeth and those piercing red eyes. It let out another growl and started moving towards me, its movements jerky and unnatural. I turned and ran, crashing through the underbrush and stumbling over roots and rocks. I could hear the thing chasing after me, its heavy footsteps getting closer with every second. I ran faster than I ever had in my life, my lungs burning and my legs aching. I finally made it back to my house and slammed the door shut behind me, locking it with shaking hands. I collapsed on the floor, gasping for air and trying to process what had just happened. I knew I had seen something that shouldn't exist, something that defied all logic and reason. The next day, I went back into the woods to look for any signs of the creature, but I couldn't find anything. No footprints, no broken branches, nothing. It was like it had never been there at all. I even asked some of my neighbors if they had seen or heard anything strange that night, but they all just looked at me like I was crazy. Since then, I've done a lot of research on cryptids and strange creatures, trying to find any information that might explain what I saw. I've read about the skunk ape, the mothman, and other legendary beings but nothing quite matches the description of the thing I encountered that night. I still go into the woods sometimes, but I'm always on high alert, always looking over my shoulder for any sign of those glowing red eyes. I don't know if I'll ever see the creature again, but I know that the memory of that night will haunt me forever. I've thought a lot about what that thing could have been. Maybe it was some kind of mutant or genetic experiment gone wrong. Or maybe it was something even more disturbing, like a demon or an evil spirit. I'm not a particularly religious person, but I can't shake the feeling that there are things in this world that we can't explain, things that exist beyond our understanding. The idea of something like that lurking in the woods, just out of sight, is enough to make my skin crawl. It's a reminder that there are still mysteries in this world things that science and reason can't fully explain. I don't know if I'll ever find out the truth about what I saw that night. Part of me doesn't want to know, doesn't want to face the reality of something so terrifying and unknowable. But another part of me can't let it go, can't stop searching for answers. 
All I know is that the experience changed me in ways I'm still trying to understand. It opened my eyes to the possibility of things that shouldn't be, things that challenge everything we think we know about the world. And while that's a frightening thought, it's also strangely exhilarating. I guess that's what keeps me going back into the woods, even after everything that happened. The chance to encounter something extraordinary, something that defies explanation. The chance to glimpse the unknown, even if it's just for a moment. And if you guys enjoyed today's episode, be sure to go ahead and smack that like and subscribe button. Also, I forgot to mention, since you guys made it this far into the episode, be sure to go ahead and comment down below, Florida disturbs you. And it's not just because of all the old people that are moving down there, but all the strange supernatural entities that continuously are spotted down there. Anyway, if you guys enjoy this kind of content where it's cryptids and strange creatures and just other paranormal supernatural phenomena being spotted in different states in the national parks, please go ahead, follow this channel, watch every single video you can. It helps out immensely, and I will see you guys all in the very next video.